I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I'm going to teach you how to use Blackbox to tune and troubleshoot your quadcopter. This is the second video in this series. If you haven't watched the previous video, then I do suggest you go back and watch it. These videos build on each other, one concept after another, and if you come in in the middle, you'll be just as confused when you leave as you were when you started. Don't blame me for that. Go back and start from the first one. The playlist is down in the video description. Work your way up to it. In this video, we're going to open our first log file and we're going to do some very, very basic interpretation of the data that we see. So here I am in my Chrome Apps uh, view. I got there by clicking this Apps button, and if you don't have that button, well, there's a way to turn it on, right? I show Apps shortcut right there. Turn that on if you don't have it. Uh, so I'll hit that, and here I am, and I've got the Betaflight Black Box Explorer app installed. This is all stuff I went over over in video one. If you didn't watch video one, you need to go watch it. You're going to be confused. Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit open log file slash video and I'm going to pick my log file. Now, I really have no idea what this log file even is. It doesn't really matter. Uh, just anything that I can open. If you've got one that you pulled from your copter, you can go ahead and open it up. And well, what are we seeing here? Well, the first thing that we see is we've got this section of the window where there's all of these lines. And if I click and drag, I can drag and look at those lines as they scroll by. Uh, so I'm, I'm sort of moving forward in time as I do that. So here's the, the timeline down here at the bottom. And this bar here shows where I am in the timeline. Here's the beginning of the flight on the left and the end of the flight over on the right and everything in between. Uh, this blue thing here is showing you the throttle, the throttle position at all the various times in the flight. And the throttle position, it's kind of a good indicator of what you were doing. So it kind of lets you uh, find your way through the flight. I can see, for example, here we did a big punch out. Here we did a low throttle something, descent maybe. So that's why they show you the throttle here uh, throughout the whole flight. And as you saw, I can click anywhere in here to go anywhere I want to within the flight. So if I see that there was a big punch out here because the blue throttle goes high, I can just click there and I can see what was going on at any given point there. I can also click and drag here in the window to move it if I so desire. So a quick way of getting around a trace is to just click and drag down here and scroll wherever you want to go. And a little bit slower way is to click and drag like that to do a little more fine, fine, uh, find control. You can also use the mouse wheel. So here I'm scrolling the mouse wheel and I can do the same thing, whatever you prefer. You'll see in the upper left, here's a craft display. This craft display shows roughly what your craft was doing. Uh, you'll notice the craft is not moving here. If you have your accelerometer enabled, then the craft will flip and roll to try to approximate what the copter was actually doing in, in real life, if it was rolling left or rolling right. Uh, this is sort of dead reckoning based on what's in the, uh, the log file. So this is not always gonna be 100% correct. Uh, if you have your accelerometer turned off, as many people do, then the craft won't move at all. And I kind of almost prefer it that way. The other thing the craft readout is good for is seeing what your motors were doing at any given point in time. So you can see that as I scroll around, I can see the motors go up and down. And we'll talk later in a later session about some of the things that that might be useful for troubleshooting. Here I've got the sticks, the sticks display. Uh, the sticks display defaults to mode 2. But if you are a flyer in another mode, you can go into the preferences and you can set to show any mode you prefer. Of course, the, the yaw, the throttle, the pitch, and the roll, they're all independent values, and we can just display any stick setting we, we prefer. Uh, that's purely a display option. It has nothing to do with what mode the pilot was actually using when the copter was flown. There's your stick positions. Up here, we've got our playback controls. Of course, we can hit play, and we can watch the video playback in real time. I said video there. Uh, I haven't loaded a video, but uh, you can load a video. Well, again, we'll cover that a little bit later. Um, I can watch the log play in real time, and I can jump forward and jump backward and jump to the end or the beginning of the log. This slider here controls the playback speed. You can slow it down or speed it up as you see fit, and we'll see different examples of that as we go forward. And then we've got the zoom slider, which zooms out and in again. 
to let you see finer detail or, or sort of a big picture perspective. If you zoom all the way out, it's actually pretty hard for the computer to keep up with it displaying all of this. So if you zoom all the way out and you hit play, you may notice, do you see it's kind of jumpy and stuttery? My computer is actually doing a fairly good job of keeping up on it. Uh, depending on your computer, if you zoom all the way out and you try and play, it may get really slow and stuttery. And the answer to that is just to zoom in a little bit more until your computer can keep up with it. So what I'd like you to do now is, I'd like you to go to Graph Setup. If you have any graphs loaded here, just go ahead and remove them until there are no graphs visible. And then click Add Graph and add the gyros graph. And that's all I want you to do right now. And then I'll hit Save Changes, and there we go. At this point, we have three lines that are on the graph. They are the roll, the pitch, and the yaw gyro. I want to talk to you about the gyros because understanding what the gyros are showing you is a critical part of understanding what your copter is doing. In fact, the gyro is maybe the most fundamental and most important sensor on your copter. And the other thing is that when you start to understand what the gyro lines are showing you, it gives you a foundation for understanding what the PIDs are doing and all the other things that you're looking at. Now if we look over here on the right, we can see that the unit for gyro is degrees per second. And so if you didn't already know this, a gyro is reporting how fast the copter is rotating about the given axis. So the first thing to know about the gyro is that the gyro has nothing at all to do with movement in space. Well, the copter could be sliding to the left or sliding to the right. It could be climbing. It could be descending. It could be flying forward or backward. None of that matters. What the gyro is reporting is the copter's uh, angular movement in space, rotation about an axis. So if degrees per second doesn't really click for you, then you're welcome to think about it as RPMs. How many RPMs is the copter rotating? Now we don't use RPMs because the copter isn't rotating on the scale of minutes. It's rotating on the scale of seconds. It's, that's that's the, the framework in which we think about it. But a degrees per 360 degrees per second is uh, you know one sixtieth of an RPM, right? Okay, so it's a, they're, they're equivalent units. And then we, we report here how fast the copter is rolling on the roll, the pitch, and the yaw axis. And those three things together uh, it completely describe the copter's uh, angular movement. Now you can see at the moment that all of these are at zero degrees per second, which means that the copter is completely stable. It is holding its attitude perfectly well. It is not pitching forward or back. It is not rolling left or right. It is not yawing left or right. Now that, again, tells us nothing about its actual attitude relative to the horizon. It could be upside down. It could be pointed at the ground. It could be pointed at the sky. All we know is that whatever it's, whichever way it's pointing, it's not, it's, it's staying pointing that direction. Now if we continue to move forward in the file, we can see that something happens here. Well, let's talk about what happens here. Now this red line here is the roll axis, and the roll axis has gone negative. A concept you're going to have to get very used to as you work with black box is that negative and positive uh, movement on these axes corresponds to movements in space. Left or right roll, forward or positive, uh, forward or backward pitch, and left or right yaw. And it can be hard to remember which of those is which. And it's easy to remember if you just pay attention to the sticks. So this is mode two, which means that here we are, the right hand stick is pushed to the left. So that is a left roll. When we pushed to the left roll, we saw that the yaw gyro went negative. Therefore, <laughs> we know that the copter, we pushed to the left roll, the copter is rolling left, the yaw gyro goes negative. Therefore, it stands to reason that negative roll is left roll. And then by inference, positive roll is right roll. Now, I, I have to tell you, I, I don't memorize this. <laughs> I couldn't tell you if you quizzed me on the street uh, whether negative roll was left or right. Uh, you just look. I, if, you, if you memorize it, good for you. If you don't memorize it, just look at the stick and remind yourself negative roll is left roll. Positive roll must be right roll. And we can keep doing that. We can look for other places where the axis uh, goes non-zero. Let's find something else that happened. 
here we go. Here we have something happening. This is the blue line, so it's the pitch axis. We can see we're pitching backwards, and we've got negative. Negative pitch is pitch backwards, and therefore positive pitch is pitch forwards. Now, interpreting these lines, it takes a little bit of practice and a little bit getting used to. When the gyro lines are centered, zero, I want you to think of the copter as holding its attitude, and then as you move forward and you see that this line becomes negative, that's telling you that the copter is pitching backward. And the more negative the line is, the faster the copter is moving. Again, this has nothing to do with its absolute position in space. It could be pointing at the sky or pointing at the horizon or pointing at the ground. All we know is that it is rolling, is pitching backwards at a rate of 19 degrees per second. And then as it becomes zero again, it stopped pitching backwards and it is now staying at whatever attitude it was facing when the line went to zero. Now I have to tell you I'm a little bit uh, surprised, honestly, at how much these sticks are moving and how little the copter is moving. We've seen some full deflection here with only, you know, 20 or 30 degrees per second, which is not very fast. It does kind of make me wonder if something is up with this log file that I randomly picked off my hard drive. Let's see if I can find a better one, uh, something that's a little bit more representative. Oh, yeah, there we go. What was going on in that last one? So this is a little bit more typical of what you would normally see. And again, we can see here, we're yawing to the left. The stick tells us we're yawing to the left. We see that the yaw gyro goes positive. The copter is yawing to the left faster and faster as this line goes more and more positive. And now it is yawing to the left oh, at approximately the same speed. It is neither going faster nor slowing down, but it is continuing to move at the same speed. And as the stick recenters, you can see that the copter slows down. It is still, the, the line is still positive. We are still yawing to the left but slower and slower until the stick recenters and the gyro roughly uh, returns to, to zero. And this is a basic kind of analysis that you can do, although you have to be careful about taking it too far. But in general, you should see a close correspondence between what the sticks are doing and what the gyros are doing. If the gyros don't closely correspond to the sticks, the copter's tune is, is really out of whack. So when the stick is centered, you should see that the gyro is roughly zero on that axis. When the stick is pushing to the left, the gyro should go positive or negative, depending on which direction corresponds to left. And in general, as the stick centers, as the stick comes to center, we should see that the gyro roughly approaches zero. Uh, that's, that just means the copter is doing more or less what it's been told to do. Anytime we look and we see the gyro doing the opposite of what it's being told to do, we know that there's something wrong with maybe even mechanically or with the tune. I'll give you another final little tip on the way out. Another thing we can do with the gyros, and that is we can use the gyros to analyze the overall noise level or vibration level of the copter. And the way that we do that is we zoom all the way out. Now you can zoom all the way out by just dragging the slider all the way to the left, or you can zoom all the way out quickly with a keystroke by pressing the Z key, or Z key, for those of you who, uh, who use that terminology. Uh, if you press the Z key, it zooms all the way out, and if you press the Z key again, it zooms all the way back to 100%, which is a quick, a quick keystroke for that. If you look at the Z key, and you look at the thickness of these lines, that is an indicator of how noisy the quadcopter is. Now these lines are after the filtering, so if we've got the gyro uh, low pass filter in beta flight or clean flight, this is after the effects of that. So in some sense, this is not telling you how noisy the copter is, but it is telling you how much noise is getting through your filters. And the lines that we're seeing here are pretty thin. These are pretty thin lines, uh, and this is a relatively noise-free copter. If we had a noisier copter, we would see the lines getting thicker and thicker uh, and that would indicate that we maybe had a motor out of balance or maybe we just need more filtering or maybe need to think about getting some different props. Let me try and open up at least one more file and see if we can do a comparison. Now this one is zoomed out and we're not seeing anything. And the reason for that is that we've got all these little boxes here. Let me tell you what those boxes are as well. Uh, those boxes mean that there's been a break in the data. It means that the logging rate that we're using is too fast. 
So in the previous video, I suggested that you want, probably want to log at about a one kilohertz rate. Now, if you're logging to an open log uh, device with an SD card, uh, even one kilohertz, you may get a lot of these dots, these breakups, and this will indicate that you need to reduce your logging rate, that, it, that the UART can't keep up. Uh, if you're logging to an onboard SD card reader or a data flash chip, you can probably log really fast without, uh, without actually experiencing this. But if you do experience this in any case, you need to reduce your logging rate to mostly get rid of these. You, you may see these occasionally uh, when you do a particularly aggressive maneuver, but if you see, as we do in this uh, file, that there's basically just all the time, that means your logging rate's too high. So this file's not going to tell us anything useful. Well, let's just see, is there any other file I can get to show you guys? Oh, how about this one? See, these lines also are pretty thin. This is another copter I had. Very thin lines. This copter is very noise-free. Here we start to see some, some weird oscillation. Here the line gets really sort of jaggy. There's some kind of weird oscillation going on there, maybe. Don't know what that is. And right here, perhaps, is an indication of what uh, excess noise or vibration would look like. Just this little thicker section here. You see how it gets kind of thick? Here we can see the individual oscillations, the zigzags, and that's maybe an indication of a tuning issue, but here the zigzags get so close together that it just becomes one thick line if you compare it like to here where the line is very thin. And this is an example of what a copter with a little bit of excessive, even this isn't too bad, but a little bit more noise uh, that may be, may be in need of a little better filtering. Uh, maybe not. This even, like I say, even this thickness of line I would not consider to be excessive. So, okay, so there you go. Alrighty, well that is how to begin analyzing stuff in Blackbox and look at the gyros. Take a look at some of your files and start to get comfortable with the idea that the line being at zero means the copter is holding its attitude. Uh, the line going positive means the copter is pitching forward or backward, uh, rolling left or right, yawing left or right, and the greater the magnitude of the line, the further it is from zero, the faster the copter is moving. Get comfortable with those ideas, and we'll come back and we'll dig in a little deeper next time. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.